Of course. Okay. Yeah, because I want to take my time to look through it. Welcome back friends. I'm Amanda. This is the Happy Homestead and today we are making bacon. Just saying that word elicits the most amazing feelings. <laughs> we did this once before last year. Last year was the first year that we ordered a whole pig, a whole hog, from a local farm that pasture raises all of their hogs. And so we had made bacon last year. And that was our first try, first go at it and it worked well but there were some things i would definitely change which is what i'm going to do this year so we ordered another whole hog this year and i have two packs of pork belly i am only going to be doing one today i find it uh probably just easier for me today to deal with the one see how it goes and then we can do the another one in six months or so and so this is Four, just under four and a half pounds of the pork belly hole, right? So the skin is off. I probably will not trim any of the fat. It's actually fairly trim. So what we're gonna do is take it out of the package, rinse it, get it over on the island, and then we're gonna start the curing process. Now, curing, you're gonna, you hear that word a lot, especially lately and um, you hear nitrates and nitrites and, and all of these different things and you're not really sure what's good. So I just kind of want to help educate what's happening on the smaller scale level, right? So that you can maybe make your own decisions on what you purchase from the commercially packaged level. So curing just basically means that you are, for this case, our pork belly, having it in a salt, sugar, and spice ratio, right? The salt is the curing part. And I will be using kosher salt from Redmond Real Salt, as always, my favorite salt. And you're drawing the moisture out of the belly, right? You do this with pancetta, prosciutto, all of those different types of cured meats. And so we're gonna be letting this sit in a basin within our salt, sugar, spice recipe, flipping it daily for about a week. And so we're drawing as much moisture out as possible. That is the curing process. Now, depending upon the cut of meat, depending upon your desired outcome of what you're doing, whether it be a pancetta or prosciutto, then it's different times, right? But for this piece of pork belly, we're just doing it around seven days and then we're gonna smoke it, slice it, and it goes in the freezer. So we're not adding nitrates or nitrites, but I need you to know that sometimes they are naturally occurring. So when you're going into the store and you're purchasing cured meats, you want to look for a label and look for the ingredients that aren't adding in those nitrates and nitrites. They do naturally occur when you're curing meat with salt. So don't be alarmed by that, but you just want to make sure you're not buying something that adds unnecessary things in. All right, so I've got this basin here, and again, I'll link things down below, right? We've got the Redmond Real Salt. There's a code below where you can get 15% off your order of Redmond Real Salt. I have brown sugar, freshly cracked pepper. I've got about eight cloves of garlic and four sprigs of rosemary in here. The garlic is just coarsely chopped, and the rosemary, all I did was take it off the stem. So I've got my belly in here. Um, we are going to rub it down with the salt and sugar and the spice and cover it and get it in the fridge. That's all there is to it. Uh, because I have four pounds of belly, I'm gonna be doing about a third of a cup of the Redmond Real Salt. This is the coarse ground. It's like a kosher salt, but it's the Redmond Real Salt but I'm using a third of a cup for the entire belly, so not third of a cup per side. So I'm just gonna and just sprinkle. I'm gonna do the same with the brown sugar. So the salt is the curing agent but the brown sugar and spices are just here to add the flavor. And you can really kind of go crazy and do whatever you'd like as far as flavor. 
I think last year we did um, coriander seeds, which was really nice. I can't remember what I, all I did last year, but the thing last year is that I don't think I actually smoked my bacon. I cured it in the oven, and this year we're going to smoke it. All right, and so now we're going to flip this over and do the same thing to the other side. Yes, some of this is obviously going to just <laughs> fall off, so I can press it in a little bit. And you'll notice here that I've got my belly on racks and that's because a lot of the moisture is going to come out and I just don't want it sitting in the moisture. So this recipe that I'm following, it is pretty much um, close to Jill Winger's recipe in her Prairie Homestead cookbook. Um, that's really kind of the basis I'm going on. I'm just, I did it a little bit differently with my rosemary and garlic. And I'm using fresh cracked pepper rather than peppercorns. But if you're looking for the actual recipe, it is in her Prairie Homestead cookbook. All right, so we're just gonna cover this up because remember, this is going to go in the refrigerator for about seven days. We're going to flip the belly once a day. And if there's a lot of extra liquid um, on the bottom, right, you can drain that liquid out in your sink. Because the whole point is to get the moisture out. And get a plastic wrap that actually clings. That might be helpful too. So I will show you as I flip it. I'm not gonna film it every day, but I'll film it and show you around day three and then again on day seven when we pull it out and put it in the smoker. See you then. Welcome back friends. It is day three in our curing of the bacon. Let me show you what it looks like. It smells so good. The garlic is coming through, the rosemary. You, The one thing you'll notice, or maybe you'll notice, is that there is definitely liquid here that has come out. This is why I like to put the, put the pork belly on the racks so it's not actually sitting in the liquid. Um, and I'm not even gonna worry about draining it right now just because it's on the racks. But you may also notice that the meat portion, um, it's gotten a little bit darker in color and this happens through the curing process. So totally normal. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is just flipping it. And this is all I have been doing for the last couple of days. Flip. And you'll see some of the stuff still sticks. And sometimes I'll just kind of go underneath here. Get some of that garlic, get some of that rosemary and just kind of put it back on. But for the most part, it has stayed on quite nicely. Um, I am going to sprinkle a little more salt on top, right? As I've been flipping the side that comes back up, I've been salting again. So it's almost as if each side is getting resalted every other day. So I'll just throw some Redmond Real Salt on there. Cover it back up. And back in the refrigerator it goes. And that's it. So that's literally what I am doing every day. On day seven, we'll come back and we're actually going to rinse it off, let it air dry in the refrigerator for a couple of days before we smoke it. So I'll see you in four more days. Welcome back folks. Today is 
either day seven or eight within our bacon journey, but I have been flipping it daily. I only resalted for the first couple of days. You probably saw me do that, I think, by day three, but I never did it again after that. So within the first three days, I'd flip it and salt the exposed upside, flip it, salt the exposed upside, right? So I did that up until day two or three is fine. I did pour out the excess liquid and then I just flipped it uh, every day thereafter. And so here we are, like I said, I don't know if it's day seven or eight, but we're ready to proceed to the next step. And what we're gonna do is literally rinse this off in the sink, put it back in our bin here on the rack and we're just gonna let it air dry for about two to three days and then we're gonna smoke it. So let's get this rinsed off. Let me show you what it looks like. So you can probably see the color, right, has gotten a little bit darker. Flip it here. It's gotten definitely a little more firm as we've gotten some of that moisture out, um, but it looks good. So yeah, let's go rinse all of this off and then we'll put it back in our bin. I'm just gonna pat it to dry as much as I can. So the whole point of washing it is just to really wash off all the excess salt, right? You don't want your bacon extremely salty. And so that's why we rinse it. Um, and now we're just patting it dry. Now obviously this towel will then go into the laundry. Uh, so you can use paper towels if you'd rather. And now we're gonna put this back in the refrigerator and let it sit for about two to three days and then we'll get it in the smoker. So I'll see you then. It's yummy. Mommy, what is that? Bacon. Yummy. All right, it has been sitting in the fridge for two days, so I am ready to get this in the smoker and get this big tub out of my refrigerator and make some bacon. So I have an electric smoker. You can use a charcoal smoker, whatever you have, as long as it can smoke the meat and get it up to 150 degrees internal temperature most likely would take between two to three hours depending upon the type of smoker. If you can achieve that result, then you can smoke your bacon. If not, then I would recommend putting this in the oven at a 175 degree oven. And again, it would take anywhere between two and three hours. And you wanna get an internal temperature of 150 degrees. So you have two options here with the oven or with a smoker. I am going to set my electric smoker on 175, get it up to temperature, and then we're gonna put our pork belly on it. Now, look what I found when I took the cover off. Evil squash bug. <laughs> he must go. <laughs> so the lowest setting my smoker actually went to was 200 temperature wise, and then there was a setting below that that said low. <laughs> so that's where I've had it at. I have it set at low. And then I checked my oven, and my oven can go to 175. So I just wanted to make sure I'm telling you good information, right? So if you want to stick with your oven, you're perfectly fine. If you have a smoker that you can set the temperature, just do the lowest setting you have. It will get up to 150 internal. Remember, that is what we're looking for. So 
So the bacon is in, or the pork belly is in. It's hopefully soon to become bacon. It is 9.30 in the morning. So I'm gonna check this in about an hour and a half. Check the temperature, see where we're at. But uh, I'll pull it out at 150, let you know how long that took, and then we'll go from there. It has been three hours. Every time I've come out here to check, the smell is intoxicating in a very good way. So I'm going to take the pork belly off of the smoker and we're gonna get it in the kitchen and wrap it up in some butcher paper. I have some butcher paper here on the counter. I'm just gonna pick up the pork belly and put it on there. And we're basically gonna wrap this up. And the purpose is really just to help let it set. It's no different than like a turkey when you're cooking a turkey or even a pork butt for that matter, right? You always wanna wrap it up and let it set. And we're gonna do that, put it back in the tub and in the refrigerator for a few hours. It is in the fridge. I am gonna keep it there. It's 12.30. So yeah, it was on the smoker for just about three hours. I'm probably gonna keep it there until tonight. Four hours minimum is how long you wanna let it rest. You can let it go overnight if that works for you just as far as your timing of your day. I'm probably gonna try to slice it tonight, um, if not tomorrow morning, but I'll show you when I do that. Now, if you have a slicer, this is where that comes in really handy. We do not. If you have a friend who has one, that's where this friend comes in really handy. We do not. <laughs> so I'm going to be slicing it by hand and doing my best. So we'll come back at that point. Good morning. And it is morning. It is 7.30 in the morning. And this was not the plan to start filming at 7.30 in the morning. But my children want bacon for breakfast. So I'm going to slice it and cook them up. And I want to be uh, authentic in what you're seeing. So you're coming along. So I'm just going to slice it as thin as I can. I'm just going to slice a couple of pieces, like, I don't know, four or five pieces, just for them for breakfast. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that color. <laughs> Doesn't that look good? Yeah. All right, I'll wrap it back up. Put it back in the fridge. We'll tackle this a little bit later. Yeah, like I said, having a slicer helps because it's really hard to slice it thin. So I'll have to figure that out. But for this morning, this will work. I'll sit with you. I usually eat breakfast after you guys are gone or I'm on my work call. It's the best, it will never change. Okay. <laughs> Your turn, Cole. My mom's bacon can never be not bad. Aw, thank you. You're welcome. I've got the bacon all vacuum sealed up. So I use um, vacuum seal bags. And I basically did it in a couple of different ways. So I have sliced bacon as thinly as I was able to slice it. 
And then there were some parts of the pork belly that were just a little bit thicker, right? Um, no matter how you sliced it, because maybe it wasn't a totally even piece. I actually diced that into chunks and called it pancetta. <laughs> so we will be able to use that for different types of dishes. So it won't be like a sliced bacon, but still worth using. And so if you come across any pieces in your pork belly that just, you know, like the ends or whatnot, they're just not quite slicing the way you want, just dice it up into some chunks and use that as either pancetta or still bacon in your recipe. And then there was a part of the pork belly that was really just pure fat, right? There's, there's really not any meat on that. And so I vacuum sealed all of the fat separate and I will use that in some sort of uh, maybe baked beans or stew. I'm not entirely sure yet. So if you have a suggestion, let me know. I'm not gonna render this down like lard because it's, it's already got flavoring in it, right? So I don't really wanna do that, but for sure this has some uses. So love to hear your ideas if you have any. I will see you guys next time. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.